So we're going to be working on complex numbers today. So complex numbers. Complex numbers means A plus BI. So we've got a new letter in there, and that is I. That I stands for imaginary numbers. So this A plus BI, the A is the real part. The BI is the imaginary part. So it's going to look like 2 plus 3i, 4 minus 7i. The A, that first part, is going to be the real part. The imaginary part goes second. So let's talk about what an imaginary number is. So I is what we use for imaginary numbers. So I means, an, means it's an imaginary number. Now, what exactly is an imaginary number? It's the square root of negative 1. So I equals the square root of negative 1. There isn't a square root, a perfect square root, that comes out to be negative 1. So we use the letter I for it so that we can simplify quadratics and radicals and things like that. So I equals the square root of negative 1. So you'll see this as I equals square root of negative 1 or I to the 1 equals square root of negative 1. The reason why I put the little 1 there is because now we need to talk about I squared. I squared equals negative 1. Now, the reason I squared equals negative 1 is because it's the square root of negative 1 squared, and that equals negative 1. Because the square and the square root cancel each other out. I cubed, I to the third power, would be I squared times I. So I squared is negative 1, and I is just I. So I to the third is negative I. Now, I know this is going to sound really weird, but basically what you're going to do after we get through this little part is you're just going to memorize I, I squared, I cubed, I to the fourth, what they all equal, and you're going to use those. So I to the fourth means I squared times I squared. I squared is negative 1. I squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Now, if we continued and did i to the 5th and i to the 6th and i to the 7th and so on and so on and so on, you would see that it's a pattern that repeats. So it is a repeating pattern. i to the 1 is just i. i squared is negative 1. i cubed is negative i. i to the 4th is positive 1. It is a repeating pattern that you need to memorize because you are going to use those things to simplify problems. So we're going to be using those things to simplify problems, but that's the, that's the big part of this little chunk that we were just talking about. If you didn't understand where I got I squared equal negative 1 came from, where, how I got that, just remember it, and we'll talk about it more when I come back. So now we're going to get into some examples. Example number 1 is 6 plus 5i plus... 2 minus 4i. Now you'll notice that I have parentheses there, so I need to get rid of those, so I'm going to distribute. In front of this set of parentheses, all I have is a positive 1, same thing over here. So I really have 6 plus 5i plus 2 minus 4i. When you're talking complex numbers, they have to be in that a plus bi form. So we have to look at our real part first. So real part is 6 plus 2. 6 plus 2 is 8. Then we look at the imaginary part, positive 5i minus 4i. So 5i minus 4i is 1i, so either i or 1i. So 8 plus i is our answer. Must be in a plus bi form. So it's kind of weird because we're so used to putting variables in the front, but that i is not a variable. That i is an imaginary number. So it has to go a plus b i, 8 plus 1 i, or 8 plus i. So I want you to try example 2 on your own. 
So I want you to take a minute and try this one on your own. Negative 9 minus 3i plus 8 plus 7i. So take a minute, try this one on your own. So your answer should be negative 1 plus 4i because our real part is negative 9 plus 8. Negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1. And then negative 3i plus 7i is positive 4i. And it has to be in that a plus bi form. So negative 1 plus 4i. Example 3. It's 5 minus 3i minus 6 minus 7i. So 5 minus 3i minus 6 minus 7i. So I have to distribute. In front of this first set of parentheses, there's just a positive 1, so 5 minus 3i stays, 5 minus 3i. But over here, that's not just a positive 1, it's a negative 1, so I have to distribute that, just like I would if it were a normal variable, if it were just x's, if it were just totally normal like you've done before. Negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. Negative 1 times negative 7i is positive 7i. And now you put your real parts together. 5 minus 6. So 5 minus 6 is negative 1. Then your imaginary part is negative 3i plus 7i. So what is negative 3i plus 7i? It's positive 4i. And there's our answer. Remember, it has to be in the form A plus BI, real plus imaginary. So I want you to try example four on your own. So take a minute and try number four on your own, negative three plus two i minus seven minus six i. So I'm going to distribute that negative so that I get negative 3 plus 2i minus 7 plus 6i. The real part is negative 3 minus 7. Negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10. The imaginary part is 2i plus 6i. It's plus 8i. So negative 10 plus 8i is your answer. Example 5. 2i times 4i times negative 3i. So 2i times 4i times negative 3i. So the way you want to do this when you have three things like that is focus on the first two. So focus on just 2i times 4i. 2i times 4i. 2 times 4 is 8. i times i is i squared. So we have 8i squared times that negative 3i. 8i squared times negative 3i. 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. i squared times i is i cubed. But you cannot leave i cubed. Think back to what we talked about at the very beginning of the video. i cubed, remember over here we said i cubed equals negative i. And remember those are cursive i's, so you want to make it with a little loop there. So i cubed equals negative i. So this is really 24 times negative i. 24 times negative i is positive 24i. So when you're doing a problem like this, you want to multiply the first two things, get that answer, then take that answer times the third one. Remember, you can't leave i to the third or i to the fourth or i squared. You have to substitute in what those, what those values are from the very beginning. So if you get i squared in a problem, you have to change it to negative 1. 
If you get i cubed, you have to change it to negative i. If you get i to the fourth, you have to change it to one. So let's try example six. Three plus two i times four minus i. So we're multiplying here. In between here, there's a multiplying sign. When there are two parentheses side by side, it's multiplying. Remember, example four had a subtraction sign. This one is multiplying. To multiply, we do three times four, so 12. Then we do three times negative i, so negative three i. Then we do two i times four, eight i. And then we do 2i times negative i. 2i times negative i is negative 2i squared. Focus on the negative 3i plus 8i because those are like terms. What is negative 3i plus 8i? That is positive 5i. Now look at that negative 2i squared. You can't leave i squared. Remember what we talked about i squared i squared equals negative 1. So this negative 2i squared is really negative 2 times negative 1. So what's negative 2 times negative 1? It's positive 2. So negative 2i squared is really positive 2. This 12 and this positive 2 are like terms. 12 plus 2 is 14. So your answer is 14 plus 5i. So let's try one more of those. So I want you to try this one on your own. So negative three minus i times two plus four i. So make sure you watch and pay attention that this one's a multiplying. When you're adding, there's a plus sign between the parentheses. When you're subtracting, there's a subtraction sign. When you're multiplying, there's nothing in between there. And so multiplying means distribute. So I distributed it all out and got negative 6 minus 12i minus 2i minus 4i squared. Focus on your like terms. Negative 12i minus 2i is negative 14i. Then look at this negative 4i squared. You can't leave an i squared. What does i squared equal? i squared equals negative 1. So negative 4i squared really means negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4. So then this negative 6 and the positive 4, those are like terms. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. So negative 2 minus 14i is your answer. The last problems that we're going to look at, example 8, it's going to look a little bit different, but it's similar to one that's on your homework. So take a minute and copy that problem down. So 5 plus the square root of negative 1 plus 6 minus the square root of negative 36. So we can't do anything the way this is. We need to fix it. The way we fix it, so to speak, is by changing the square root of negative 1. What is the square root of negative 1? The square root of negative 1 is i. So 5 plus the square root of negative 1 is really 5 plus i. Over here, 6 minus the square root of negative 36. The square root of regular 36 is 6. So the square root of negative 36 is 6i. So this is really 6 minus 6i. Six 